Last night we were hanging out a little bit and you were telling us that you're not just really an exchange, you're building like a, a Bitcoin ecosystem. Yeah. So can you just talk about the kind of like ecosystem of products you're building and what the kind of strategy is behind this? Yep. Um, so I think initially when we first started out with CoinCorner in 2014, it was people wanted to buy Bitcoin. So we wanted to create an easy on-ramp, get people on to buy Bitcoin. That was the use case back then, buying it. Um, or getting exposure to it, whether it's investment, store of value, whatever you want to classify as. Um, once we kind of, once I guess I got myself and some of the founders got our heads into Bitcoin and how it works properly, um, it was kind of like, okay, this is a, a real world use case. It can be used in certain ways that, you know, we all go through that cycle, I think, of um, understanding and uh, the, the the cycle of it's going to solve everything, it solves nothing, it solves everything. You, you back and forwards all the time with various uh, concepts and ideas. Um, but uh, once we'd kind of created this on board, a fiat on ramp for, for Bitcoiners to come and buy Bitcoin, we wanted to say, okay, well, how do we, what's this long term project? What's, you know, are we just trying to get people to speculate on the price? Or is Bitcoin actually going to be used in the real world? And a lot of the other competitors at the time, uh, going into like 2016, 17 times, they were just creating um, altcoin casinos. Be polite at the minute. Uh, <laughs> that'll change later. <laughs> um, <laughs> So they were creating casinos effectively and it was all on speculating on the price of things and there was no what we saw as a value there in terms of a real world value, real world use case, there was just nothing there. So we wanted to try and come away from that and, and push ourselves away and be more of a niche and go, at, okay, well, how can Bitcoin actually be used in the world? Um, so we started introducing all sorts of things really throughout. So you can obviously buy Bitcoin, you've got the wallet on the app. Um, you can send and receive now with Lightning. Um, we've introduced merchant services, so merchants all around the world can have an account with us. They can pay invoices, receive payments. Um, that can be, for example, an airline company can invoice somebody in South Africa and South African can um, pay them, buy a Bitcoin, it comes straight into their Coin Corner account and it can be flipped to pounds or euros. Um, so it was it was then a focus of okay well there's real world use cases here there's cross border payments there's uh, we're seeing it we're kind of seeing it in El Salvador in certain areas obviously it's a bit of a top down approach um, but there is real world use cases for this and it was kind of like if it's going to be a payment system that everyone thinks it is like with Lightning can we can we also sort of relate that to the real world and what people are familiar with in the real world and, and especially in the UK. 93% of in-person payments now in the UK are contactless payments. So that was where we thought, okay, well, how do we create products and like people are using in the, the, the traditional financial legacy financial world, how do we bring that into our world? So we then created the bolt card, which was then contactless lightning cards, tap and pay. Um, so that ecosystem has slowly evolved out. We've got recurring payments. We've got all sorts of things now that we're trying to build around without saying copying or cloning the traditional financial system, but all online. And so there's eventually, we see, I guess, the long game as what we have with Bitcoin and Lightning is far superior as a technology to what the current financial system has and is. And over time, that will migrate over to Bitcoin and Lightning. So that's going to take years and you know decades away, but that's where we're positioning ourselves to make sure we're driving that for one and, and showing that it can be done, which it can be done, um, and then trying to actually position ourselves in the future to be that company there that supports this ecosystem. So where some exchanges really just give you the ability to buy and hold or sell and maybe custody, you're thinking of kind of like the next step. You're almost kind of like a bank in some ways in that you're helping facilitate payments and convert back to fiat. Uh, so is that is that the kind of strategy to be more bank-like? Um, we're not a bank. I know. I know you're not a bank, but <laughs> you're providing. That, but so, yes. so let's put, you're providing almost banking-like services. Though. It's kind of like Bitcoin banking is, yeah, is, yeah kind of where you go down. Um, so, yeah, it's it's cloning like the legacy system and trying to bring that onto the Bitcoin standard and running on that that level of technology. But it's the, the way I see it, and the way like we look at legacy technology and, and legacy systems, Visa, Mastercards, Swift, everything else. The innovation on them is is grinded to a halt. It doesn't really change. Nothing really happens. It doesn't move. It's very centralized. It's very controlled. Um, what we have with Bitcoin Lightning Networks, open, interoperable, that allows for innovation to happen overnight. We released the bulk card in uh, end of May, June this year, and already 
because it's open and people can go and play with it and, and use it in different ways. You can already do it in a non-custodial way. People are creating their own versions of the cards. People are using it in Brazil, in El Salvador. The, you know, all of a sudden, in, within four or five months, it's being used, I think, in it's about 45 different countries where we've had videos of people using it and showing it. And it's not all Coin Corners and Coin Corners customers. It's the card itself just being used. Um, so it shows how fast innovation can happen.